I'm Dr. Paul Seifel of the Department of Army, the scientific leader at the South Pole Station. We've been here at the South Pole Station for the past year, carrying out part of the International Geophysical Year program. Paul Seipel was born during the last days of the golden age of exploration. During his boyhood, new scientific discoveries seemed to happen every day. The planet still held great mysteries, hidden places, and unexplored territories. Scientists, map makers, and explorers were changing the face of the Earth and scripting a young boy's dreams. Livingstone, Stanley, Cook, and Peary were the names of legends. Their exploits filled the monthly pages of National Geographic, Harper's Monthly, and Popular Science. When the stories of these great men were profiled in the Erie Sunday Times, young Paul Seipel found a hint to the path down which he would travel. Paul's family moved to Erie when he was 10, and at 12 he joined the newly formed Charter of the Erie Boy Scouts. Scouting shaped young Paul's life. He would go on to earn 60 merit badges and become an Eagle Scout. He first learned about Robert F. Scott's ill-fated journey to the South Pole while serving as a Sea Scout aboard the retired U.S. Brig Niagara. When Paul was finishing his senior year in high school, Navy Captain Richard Byrd flew his Fokker F-7 tri-motor airplane, the Josephine Ford, over the North Pole. The flight made Byrd a national celebrity and was daring enough to guarantee him funding for a trip to Antarctica. Byrd was a strong proponent of scouting and like Shackleton before him, decided to offer a qualified scout an opportunity to join the expedition. Paul jumped at the chance and quickly applied. At the time, there were 826,000 U.S. Boy Scouts and thousands of them applied. Only 88 of the applicants met all of Byrd's strict criteria. After rigorous consideration, the national office came up with a short list of six scouts for Byrd to interview. In 1928, at the age of 19, Paul Seipel was awarded the position in the first expedition of Commander Robert E. Byrd to Antarctica. Paul would not return to Erie for three years. Paul Seipel went back to Antarctica five more times. As a biologist, he studied lichen and mosses, identifying many new species. Seipel was also the first to bring the emperor penguin back to the U.S. He trained as a dog sledder and redefined how to camp and explore the frozen climbs of the southern polar ice cap. But he will also be remembered for answering the age-old question, how cold is it? Degrees cycle or the wind chill factor is a scientific constant which describes the rate of heat loss per hour per one square meter of a surface exposed to the atmosphere. Seipel became a geographer. He explored and charted the northwestern part of Antarctica's Ford Ranges east of the Ross Ice Shelf. He designed cold weather gear and in 1956 was selected to be a scientific leader of the International Geophysical Years Exploration Team to establish a permanent colony in the South Pole. This last trip is regarded as Dr. Seipel's greatest achievement. Antarctica's Seipel Coast and Seipel Island were named in his honor. He received the Hubbard Medal from the National Geographic Society in 1958.